Today is Bergen Bordeaux Wine Shopping Day at Total Wine. If you've ever visited one of their stores, you know it has wow factor from the moment you walk in the door. The shelves are well stocked and there's clear signage throughout the store. I picked up five bottles of red Bordeaux ranging from $11 to $27 each for a combined tab of just under $100. Even though the wines in this video were purchased at Total Wine, many can be found through other sources including in the international markets. In this video, I'll provide background information on Bordeaux, along with shopping tips and a tasting and evaluation on each of the wines purchased. Hi, I'm Bob Polinski, Master of Wine. Thank you very much for clicking on today's video. Over the last 40 years or so, I've had more wines from Bordeaux than any other wine region around the world. Bordeaux is a place that is known as the classic, iconic source for some of the world's greatest wines, oftentimes at very hefty prices as well. But the fact is, this is also a region of tremendous value if you know where to look, and that'll be the focus of today's video. I took several factors into consideration. With some, I've tasted the wines previously, so I have firsthand experience. Overall, I considered the Appalachian, the specific Chateau, along with the strength of the vintage. Here I'm focusing on the plentiful and outstanding 2020 vintage. It's the third of a trio of excellent years from Bordeaux. And a special thanks to Ted. He's been very helpful each time I've stopped in my local Total Wine. Bordeaux is a port city in western France. The surrounding region produces around 600 million bottles of wine each year from nearly 60 Appalachians, which includes several thousand wine-producing chateaus. About 90% of the region's production is red wine. Commonly, the region is split into what is termed left and right bank. In general terms, the left bank is more Cabernet Sauvignon based, the right bank being more Merlot focused. Collectively, across the entire region, the primary grape varieties rank highest to lowest are Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon, and Cabernet Franc. Melbeck, Petit Verdot, and Carmenier combine to make up a very small part of the percentage. More recently, some additional varieties have come into play on a limited basis due to the effects of climate change. It might be surprising that Cabernet Sauvignon does not play a larger role within all of Bordeaux. Since that's where the origins tie back to, and it is the world's most broadly planted wine grape variety. But within Bordeaux, Cabernet Sauvignon is heavily focused within the left bank. That's where the growing conditions are most ideal for it. A Cab Sauve is also relatively new on the wine scene. It came about in the 17th century, and some DNA testing about 30 years ago tied it back to two much older grape varieties, that being Cabernet Franc, and Sauvignon Blanc. Apparently they got together, they worked their magic, and the result of that was Cabernet Sauvignon. Bordeaux includes some of the world's most renowned wines, wines that can quickly get into the several hundreds or thousands of dollars per bottle. Some have the potential to age well for decades. This is the stuff of legend. That said, the ultra premium range makes up a very small part of what's produced in the region. Let's get into the tasting to see how the value-priced Bordeaux stack up. The first wine up is the 2020 Chateau Bois Redon Bordeaux Superior. This is made from 75% Merlot, 25% Cabernet Sauvignon. This is produced within the right bank. This first wine is the least expensive in today's tasting. And this is really Bordeaux at a base level just a slight tick above it. So I'm not expecting something fantastic here, but this should be a decent, solid glass of wine. In terms of the color, uh, medium deep color. Uh, I would not expect a huge amount of extraction for a, a wine of, of this caliber, but the color looks good. There's a little bit of fade as you get out to the, to the edge of the glass. There's no indication of any browning or amber color. So the wine definitely does have a, a nice youthful appearance. The aroma is, is decent. There's some nice red fruit character, a little bit of that cassis note, uh, a bit of a dried herb characteristic, which is oftentimes uh, quite typical in Bordeaux. There is no overt oak in this wine. And with this price point, I wouldn't expect there would be any obvious oak characteristic to it. But the aroma is nice. There's some good, pleasant lift to it. And uh, it's really quite solid. On the palate, Again, decent, solid, 
uh, well-made glass of wine, nothing fantastic, but this is a good example of Bordeaux at a base level. Now, oftentimes with inexpensive Bordeaux, you can find this green character, this underlying uh, green, lean, mean characteristic to it. This doesn't have any of that. And I think part of the reason for that is the vintage itself, the 2020 vintage. Uh, the fruit has a good degree of ripeness. So you do get an adequate alcohol level from, from the sugar being quite ripe. But there's also the phenolic ripeness as well, which makes the wine a little more complete. Not an overly exciting glass of wine, but definitely decent for the money. Next up is the 2020 Chateau Loiseau Bordeaux Superior. As with the first wine, this is also from the right bank. Not a terrible start, but we need something better at this point. Uh, this producer is also Bordeaux Superior, so the same classification level as the previous wine. This wine I've tasted in past years, and I've always thought it's been very, very solid, so the expectation here is definitely higher. This is made from Merlot, Cabernet Franc, and Petit Verdot. And Petit Verdot is something that you'll find in very small percentages within Bordeaux. If it's used in a wine, it's usually going to be under 5%, oftentimes just 1% or 2%. But it's a, a, a grape variety that brings a tremendous amount of color, depth, and weight to the wine. Now, looking at the color on this, this definitely has more depth, uh, certainly at the core. And as you get out to the rim, this has a higher level of extraction. Oh, yeah. So we've definitely upped the game here. Uh, much more intensity on the aromatics, more range to it, more breath. Uh, you get that red black fruit characteristic, a little bit of smoky spice note to it as well. I mean, it smells really, really good and, and very typical for a solid base level of Bordeaux. Same on the palate, very round, weighty, it's very soft, there's good length, it carries through to the back palate. For an extra buck or two, this is a big step up on the previous wine. Really solid effort. This is not something that you want to sell her away. It's really for drinking now. Uh, it doesn't have the structure. It doesn't have the build to, to age well. But Bordeaux at a base level or just a tick above that, this is a very solid effort. And I got to tell you, I'm really quite happy with it. Good glass of wine. If you've not yet subscribed to my channel, please consider doing it right now. Also hit that like button and definitely hit the notification bell. That way you'll be kept up to speed on all things happening here. It's much appreciated. Next is the 2020 Chateau Lanassan Home Doc, which is 52% Cabernet Sauvignon, 43% Merlot, 5% Petit Verdot, which is actually quite high for the latter grape variety. So with this next wine, we have a completely different story. This is the only Bordeaux from the left bank. Uh, it's actually very close proximity to Chateau Bechevelle and Chateau Brunier du Cru, which coupled the great classified growths from St. Julian. Uh, I recall tasting this wine from vintages back in the 70s. I would have had these wines in the mid 80s when they were about 10 years old or so. They aged incredibly well back then. And periodically over the years, I've had these wines from time to time. And I think it's just one of the best bargains from Bordeaux. It's an estate that actually does get some, some solid international distribution as well. Uh, color on it is very good. Good depth of color. The core is not quite opaque, but there's some, some good depth. You can tell the wine has solid extraction. The aroma is classic left bank Bordeaux. Uh, black fruit, cassis, uh, some deep red fruit characteristics, a good whiff of oak in this wine, a bit of a cedary note to it. Uh, smells wonderful. It has good intensity. And there's this underlying dried herb note as well, which oftentimes you can find in a, in a good number of Bordeaux. Oh yeah, on the palate, rock solid. I mean, very good volume on the palate. There's nothing thin or washed out about this wine at all. I mean, good, some good heft to it. And that presence carries right through to the back palate. Very well put together. It's balanced. There's good length. And this is a wine that has some structure to it. I think you could hold on to this for maybe five years or so with absolutely no problem at all. Uh, a beautiful wine, a fantastic value year after year. This is definitely a Bordeaux to search out.
The final two wines are a bit more pricey. Next up is the 2020 Chateau de la Dauphantine Fransac from the right bank. With the last two wines, they're both from the same appellation by the name of Fransac. Now, for me, this is the absolute gold mine for value in Bordeaux. I love the wines there. I think over the last 20 years or so, they've upped their game. Uh, the wines generally have good weight, solid structure. Now, keep in mind, these are from the right bank, so Merlot is definitely going to be more of the, the predominant player. Uh, with this particular wine, it's 85% Merlot and 15% Cab Franc, and that's really quite typical for, for that region. Okay, get a look at this color. I mean, incredible extraction, nearly opaque at the core, very little fade out to the rim. Uh, I mean, it's purple. It has this vibrancy to it, but tremendous amount of extraction. The aroma, uh, really quite compelling. It has that dark plum characteristic to it. There's some black fruit, a little cassis note, uh, smoke, spice, there's oak here. A lot going on in the aroma. Uh, I think this wine will definitely uh, show much more when the wine aerates a bit, but immediately, right out of the gate, it's really quite compelling. Yeah, definitely not a wine for the timid. This is a big boy. A lot of extraction to it. This is a very modern style of Bordeaux, and it's ripe. There's almost like a, a plump, robust character to it. Very, very soft on the palate. Good integration of oak. Tannins are very, very soft, but there's some heft and weight to this wine. This is really a beauty. Uh, it's made in much more of a, a modern style. Uh, this is not what I would call classic Bordeaux, but Beautifully made, very well proportioned. Everything is in balance. This is quite the stunner. Definitely check this wine out. And the next wine up is the 2020 Chateau de Lem Fransac. This is predominantly Merlot with a lesser amount of Cabernet Franc. And a good percentage of this wine is aged in new French oak barrels. And this last wine is the second one from Fransac. Uh, this is an old property. This property has been around for more than 400 years. Uh, it's a little bit of a higher vineyard site, so there is some elevation within Bordeaux. There's really no area that has tremendous elevation, but this one is a bit lifted. And it's in very close proximity to the vineyards of saint Emilion and Palmerol. Uh, so I've had this wine, again, many times over the years. Uh, it's been a few years, though, since I've had it. Uh, but I've always had very good success with it. I think this wine very much over delivers for, for the money. Uh, in terms of color, not quite as deep and dense as the first wine, but absolutely fantastic extraction in this wine as well. Based on the way this wine smells, this will be the wine I'm drinking later tonight. I think this smells incredible. Uh, there is this plum characteristic, dark fruit, smoky spice, a little savory, dried herb. There's a lot going on, and the cork on this wine has just been popped. So with some aeration, there's no doubt in my mind this is going to show much broader range, but love the way this wine smells. Yeah, on the palate, this all carries through. There's plenty of weight. Everything is nicely balanced, well-proportioned. Uh, the oak is quality oak. It's well integrated. And the tannins are evident, but they're not angular. They're not rough tannins. Uh, this is a wine that is built to easily age another five years or so. And over that time, no doubt, it'll up its game. This one does get some good international distribution. I love this wine. This is what I'm going to be drinking later tonight. So if you're interested in classic style Fransac, you're a fan of Right Bank Bordeaux, this is spot on. Search it out. Bordeaux is a place that has tremendous value. Hopefully this video helped to highlight a few of those that are worth searching out. If you have any questions or comments, post it down below. I'll do my very best to follow up. As always, thank you for your support of this channel. I'm going to be drinking something interesting tonight. I hope you are as well. And please stop back again before too long. Cheers.